uh, still doing partial fractions. Uh, this time it's special because you've got a linear equation over a cubic equation. x plus 3 times x squared plus 1. Uh, so the rule that we've used in the past, which is a over that um, plus uh, b over that, doesn't quite work anymore. Uh, because these needed to be uh, linear terms, and this needed to be a quadratic. So, that's not correct. What you actually need is bx plus c. So, when there's a cubic underneath, you're going to end up with a, and then uh, bx plus c as your, um, as your next term. So, then when you turn this into a partial fraction, we can say that, uh, I'll just do it here. Okay, that 4x plus 2 is going to be equal to a times that plus um, bx plus c times that. Everything proceeds pretty normally from here. Uh, we need to get rid of one of the terms. So if I get rid of, if I let x equal negative 3 negative 3, then uh, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, plus 2 is uh, negative 10, and then uh, negative 3 squared is 9, plus 1 is 10, so we're going to have 10a, so a is equal to negative 1, uh, and then if I let x equal, oh, what's going to happen here? Let's see. Alright, so we might need to let a equal negative 1 and figure out the other bits. Actually, having a look at it here, um, if we let b, if we let x equal 0, sorry, if we let x equal 0, then the b will disappear. So I'm going to let um, x equal 0. Uh, now, 4 times 0 is 0, plus 2, so 2 is going to be on our left-hand side. I'm still going to let a equal negative 1, because you know what a is. So it's negative 1 times 1, uh, plus bx is 0, plus c, and then it's uh, 0 plus 3, so it's going to be 3c. So that's going to be 3 equals 3c, so c equals 1. Uh, and then I should be able to put in some... Uh, values for a and c and then put in another value in for uh, x and I should be able to spit an answer out here. Um, so, so we should be able to let x equal pretty much anything we want uh, and then let a equal negative 1, let c equal 1 and b should, should pop out. So I'm going to let x equal 2. I uh, could have let it equal 1 or 5 or whatever. Um, so that's going to be 8 plus 2 is 10. That's going to be 2 squared plus 1 is 5. So 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Uh, plus uh, b, I don't know b yet, so it's going to be 2b. It's going to be plus 2b uh, plus 1 and then 2 plus 3, which is 5. Alright, so just a little more working here. 10 minus 5 uh, plus 10b plus 5. Cancel out, cancel out. b is going to be equal to 1. That would have worked no matter what our x was, uh, as long as we knew what our a and our c values were. So, a is negative 1, c is 1, B is 1. So now that I've got that, I can rewrite this as negative 1 over x plus 3 plus uh, bx is 1x plus 1 over x squared plus 1. Um, and then I can't really integrate x plus 1 on the top, but what I can do is rewrite it again as x on x squared plus 1 plus 1 on 
x squared plus 1. All right, so I'm going to just do a, a therefore. The integral of that is equal to the integral of that. And I should be able to integrate that. So you can pretty much just uh, differ, uh, integrate by rule here. So you've got negative uh, log base e x plus 3, uh, then 1 half uh, log base e uh, x squared plus 1, and then this one's a special one, it's uh, 10, or inverse 10, uh, x. And don't forget your little plus c on the end. Now, you can muck around with these two to combine them. So I'm just going to start calling this ln instead. It's going to save me some time. Um, plus ln x squared plus 1 to the half uh, plus 10 negative 1 x plus c. And then we can combine uh, these two into something. So we've got uh, ln x squared plus 1 to the half minus ln x plus 3. So we should be able to rewrite that as ln. Uh, it's that one on the top to the half um, over, so that's one big bracket, uh, plus inverse 10 x plus c. All right, a uh, little bit of work to do there. That's really the new piece of information. This stuff here are uh, uh, integration rules that you should have.